Now in our third and final section, we will discuss about the difficult and failed airway. In this, we will discuss the devices for difficult and failed intubation. Uh, what are some special patients who, are, uh, who need special attention? And then suspected cervical spine injury, falls, pitfalls, and myths. Difficult airway. Difficult airway predicted. Uh, if there is difficult airway, we should call for assistance. That's important. Uh, then uh, difficult airway predictive oxygen level is less than 90%. If it's yes, then we should perform the uh, bag mask ventilation predicted to be successful. If no, maintains body mask, maintains oxygen concentration of 90% or not. If it's not, then we it means it's the failed airway. So that's the, uh, we can say the definition of the failed airway if the bag mask ventilation is, uh, um, is not able to rise the oxygen concentration above or equal to 90%. If it's successful, then intubation predicted to be successful. Yes, we should do RSI and double setup. Go to main algorithm. If no awake technique, if unsuccessful means oxygen concentration is not more than 90%, we go for blind nasotracheal uh, cricothyrotomy, fiber optic method, intubating LMA, lighted stylet, failed airway. So basically, the difficult or the failed airway is the method when the Techniques for uh, like bag mask ventilation and blind intubation, these fail to rise the like, level of oxygen concentration above the 90%, then we should call it the failed or um, difficult airway. Failed airway criteria, we have uh, LMA or com combi uh, combi tube may be attempted while preparing for cricothyrotomy. So, what's the criteria for the failed airway? Uh, with mask ventilation, the oxygen concentration less than ninety percent then we should consider fiber optic method, intubating LMA, lighted style supraglottic airway. Time allows and successful. If it's yes, then we should go for cuffed endotracheal tube placed. If no, then arrange for definitive airway management. So all that uh, thing, the, the criteria depends on the level of oxygen concentration. If it is raised above 90%, then we should go for endotracheal tube placement. If not, then we should go for the depth definitive airway management. Next, the devices for difficult or failed intubation. Uh, we have uh, extra glottic devices like laryngeal mask airway, LMA, laryngeal mask airway, uh, combi tube, King LT laryngeal tube, King laryngeal tube. Then we can do video laryngoscopy, fiber optic intubation, 
light stylet intubation, retrograde intubation, digital intubation, surgical airway, cricothyrotomy, and transtracheal jet ventilation. So all these are the devices and techniques used for the failed or difficult intubation, extraglottic devices, video laryngoscopy, uh, fiber optic intubation, lighted stylet intubation, retrograde intubation, digital intubation. So these are all the techniques and devices for the failed intubation. Some special patients uh, if these are the patients when they have some anatomical abnormalities present, this is the uh, mandible bone body of the hyoid bone, thyroid cartilage, cricoid cartilage. Then we have the mandible, hyoid cartilage, thyroid, uh, cricoid, and manubrum sterni. Anatomical differences between adults and children in the anatomy and what's their clinical significance. So anatomical positions as we went over them in the previous slide that there are differences between the adults and the children. We have large intraoral tongue occupying relatively large portion of the oral cavity in the adults. Straight blade preferred over curve to push distensible anatomy out of the way to visualize the larynx. High tracheal opening C1 in infancy Y versus C3 to C4 at A7, C4 to C5 in adults. High anterior airway position of the glottic opening compared with that in adults. Then we have large occiput that may cause flexion of the airway, large tongue that easily collapses against the posterior pharynx. Sniffic position is preferred. The larger occiput actually elevates the head into the sniffing position in most infants and children. So the occiput, it helps in the sniffing position and we mentioned that sniffing position is better for the airway obstruction. Cricoid ring is the narrowest portion of the trachea as compared with the vocal cords in the adults. Uncuffed tubes provide adequate seal because they fit snugly at the level of the cricoid ring. Correct tube size essential because variable expansion cuff tubes not used. Consistent anatomical variations with age with fewer abnormal variations related to body habitus, arthritis, and chronic disease. Younger than 2 years high anterior 2 to 8 year transition, older than 8 years small adults. So these are all the differences in the age group. Anatomical changes keep on occurring until the full uh, grown uh, 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 individual. So all these uh, some help and some don't help in the airway management. Large tonsils and adeno adenoids may bleed more acute angle, more difficult uh, intubation. Small cricothyroid membrane, needle cricothyrotomy, difficult. So these are the differences between the adults and children. Then we have pediatric airway equipment uh, selection, length and weight based uh, pedi pediatric equipment chart. So depending on the, this is, this is the whole chart that gives you what are the different, uh, uh, according to weight, length, what are the different uh, size, colors that can be used. 
Suspected cervical spine injury, if it is present, then we need to be very, very careful because we can aggravate the condition. Pulse, pitfalls and myths. Uh, learn to recognize objective signs of impending airway compromise. Although bedside maneuvers or airway adjuncts can re-establish airway potency that do not provide definitive airway protection. Select your pre-treatment medications to mitigate adverse effect of succinylcholine. Competence with bag mass ventilation is requisite for airway management. Airway equipment and drug dosing based on age, weight, and length. Backup plan should be formulated. Prior to initiating RSI, prepare for intubation using mnemonic soap me. Use RSI with inline immobilization for airway management. Definitive airway requires endotracheal tube in trachea secured in place. Be familiar with algorithms, devices, etc. Not every patient needs RSI. Proper endotracheal tube placement needs to be confirmed after every intubation. Uh, neuromuscular blocking agents do not provide analgesia and sedation. After any unsuccessful intubation attempt, change something before next attempt. Without changing, most likely any next attempt will be unsuccessful again. So that concludes our today's topic of emergency medicine. Thank you for watching Scardia.com.